Hi, my dear doers. Today I'll tell you about something that has changed Stealthy Woods' life, the master production schedule. One of the main benefits of the master production schedule for us is the tool's communication capability concerning plans within manufacturing. It provides concise information about any manufacturing plan and gives us a clear understanding of what to expect. It also helps us prioritize requirements within the supply chain by analyzing all requirements and then choosing what needs to be done first. Finally, MPS will maintain perpetual production. By having a steady flow of production, we gain efficiency and speed. This is convenient, especially when our delivery is for superhero in need. So you have probably understood this by now, but the master production schedule is really important for Stealthy Wood. It helps us be more efficient by saving time and money during the manufacturing and replenishment processes. So let's see how you can benefit from the same things by testing this in Stealthy Woods database. All right, here I am on my database, specifically looking at the manufacturing application. From here, we're gonna to go to configuration, settings, and from the settings page, we're going to activate the option master production schedule underneath the planning section. Okay, so I already have this saved and activated. And of course I defined uh, the time range and the number of periods I want for my MPS. Okay, so since I have it saved, let's go to planning and then master production schedule to look at our beautiful schedule. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do from here is add a product. So I'm gonna click on the add a product button. Okay, let's choose uh, my conference table, for example. Okay, and then I can set a, a safety stock target. So this is the stock I want to have on hand at the end of the period. And then I can also set my minimum and maximum quantities to replenish as well. All right, so let's go ahead and say my safety stock target will be five. And I'll leave the rest the way that it is and then click on save. All right, now I have that conference table added to the list and uh, my products will be organized based on their sequence. Okay, so um, I can always change that stock target as well if I want to by clicking here. Okay, I have uh, my product, of course, and then the safety stock target and those minimum and maximum quantities to replenish. Okay, and if I want to, I can change this. Um, but note that that uh, stock target is shown right here um, from the main view. And when I change this, it's gonna change there as well. All right, and now we see that I have some quantities to replenish as well. All right, so I just wanted to point that out. And I have some information already visible as we can see here, but I can also decide what information I would like to show. And to do that, I simply go to rows, Okay, and I can select or deselect anything that I would like. Okay, so I really have the choice to show as much or as little information as I want. Okay, but it's easy to decide what you wanna see and to simply select. Okay, but here's the, here's the hard part. Uh, now we have to estimate the demand uh, for the period that we choose, okay? And the estimation will be entered in the row demand forecast, which we have here. Okay, and if needed, I can compare that forecast with the actual demand. So I see that right below. And again, that's a row that I can activate or deactivate. Okay, um, and the actual demand will be uh, our confirmed sales. Okay, now something else we need to keep in mind is that the demand forecast will directly impact my uh, indirect demand for the components of the product. Okay, and I see the indirect demand forecast right below. Okay, so my demand forecast, actual demand, and indirect demand forecast. All right, so with all of this, my quantity to replenish will be automatically computed for the different periods. And uh, the replenishments I'm supposed to launch will display in green. Okay, so for example, for my conference table, I have this displayed in green here, and I can replenish it by clicking on the replenish button. So I can do that for the product specifically. And once I hover here, I'm gonna see uh, for which period or week or month, however you define your periods, um, which one will be impacted. And then I also have um, a, a large replenish button at the top of the page as well, which will replenish everything that needs to be replenished. Okay, so I can click that as well. Okay, so if I click on replenish, it will be replenished and beautiful. Okay, so once we do that, the system will automatically create an RFQ, so a request for quotation or a manufacturing order. All right, and I can access these from this page as well. All right, so I'm going to um, be able to click on this button right here. And again, this is a row which we can choose to see or not, actual replenishment. And once I click on this, 
I'm going to be able to see if a manufacturing order or a request for quotation has been generated. So in this case, I have eight RFQs, so eight requests for quotations. Okay, and if I go to a product which I manufacture, uh, so for example, my desk combination, I'm going to see 44 manufacturing orders. Okay, and I'll be able to click here as well. All right, so that's really easy. But I can also decide to change the quantity that I want to replenish, okay? And this is easy, I just have to enter it in manually. Okay, so um, let's say uh, instead of 20 here, I can put 10, okay? And then if I say, okay, maybe that wasn't such a good idea and you want to go back to the amount that was automatically computed, um, all you have to do is click on the X. So it's pretty easy. Okay, but now what will happen if I underestimate or overestimate the demand? It's pretty simple actually. Uh, if I underestimate the demand, the, the cell uh, quantity to replenish, okay, so to replenish here, uh, it will become uh, orange. Okay, if I do the opposite, so um, if I decrease the demand forecast, the cell will become red. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you how this looks. Okay, um, so for example, we have two here. If I um, say 10 for this item, I have a security net as well. So we're going to replenish 20 the, for the demand forecast and also for the forecasted stock. But we have already um, requested 20 and I can see that actual replenishment here. Again, 10, 20 requests for quotation. But then if I change that demand forecast, okay, so if I make it 5, the cell will turn red. Okay, and then we see that this is orange as well because it's 20. Um, again, let's say five, it's okay. 10, it turns orange. Okay, so it's just a really nice way to keep track of everything that's going on as well. So now I will be able to juggle with forecasted demands and replenishments a bit more easily. And that's all for this video. If I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.